welcome back to my channel. Um, today, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be walking you through my entire AMCAS application. And I just want to put a disclaimer out there like I always do about my medical school journey is that everyone is so different and there isn't the right way or the wrong way to do things. This is just what I've done and I only put this out there for inspiration and not for comparison. I hate the pre-med culture where people are constantly trying to one-up the other person and always trying to show off what they're doing. This is not that type of video. I'm not trying to do that. I'm doing this to just show you what I did and what I did that was successful in getting me accepted into schools. Also. I had no idea what the AMCAS application looked like before applying. I hadn't watched any of these types of videos. Now I know that they're a thing, so I should have, but I had no idea what it looked like, what to expect, how long to expect it would take. And so I wanted to make this video, again, trying to make this whole process as transparent as possible for everyone. And so hopefully you learned something today. So let's just get started this is just what it looks like after you've submitted so obviously doing it looks a lot different there's check boxes there's things to fill out this is like my completed application and what they send you and what the schools will see in front of them as they're going through your application so first thing all of your just demographic identifying information and i will just note here that if you see i submitted this on July 21st and it did not get finished being processed until September 1st so I said it in my MCAT video I said it in my last video apply as soon as you can because this gap is something I did not know about apply as soon as possible get your application in when you can um, to avoid being submitted in September when you thought it was going to be July so moving on basic stuff. My full name's Alyssa, so you'll see that a lot on here, but I definitely prefer to go by Allie. So you would just put in your contact information, your email, phone, where you live. Um, this is kind of just your biographic information. If you're a resident, your military service, um, your ethnic identification, all of that. Again, this is just a bunch of check boxes, and this part probably took me I don't know, a couple, not even an hour maybe, just clicking through, filling out things. Okay, then it kind of asks you some stuff about your childhood. Again, trying to get a feel for your demographic information, your family income level, um, and how you paid for your um, college. And so that's a, that'll be percentages. So you don't have to know exactly the numbers, but if you can start getting a rough idea of like what percent you paid versus what percent you took out loans for, all of that. Um, and then it asks you about your parents to kind of see if you're a first generation student, if your parents have gone to medical school, if they've gone to college. Um, and then we get to the academic record. And I was kind of going back and forth on if I wanted to share my GPA because again, I don't want this to make people feel bad about themselves um, for comparison. Like I don't really like to be compared, but I already sh shared my MCAT store score. And I feel like to know about what can get you in, it's useful to know. I don't know if someone's offended. I'm sorry, I just decided that I was gonna go for it and just share my GPA. It's not like it's some big secret. I did work really hard in my undergrad, so I am proud of my GPA. Um, so I figured I'll just share it. But again, I don't want anyone to feel like if they didn't get this GPA, they're not gonna get in. Or you might, you definitely could have had a better GPA than me because it wasn't perfect. But again, no comparisons here. I'm just sharing my journey. So here we go. So. I actually took some uh, college credits in high school, and this is actually where my lowest GPA came from. So be careful if you're taking high school credits, um, if you're a high schooler watching this, be careful. You wanna get good grades then because it actually will count towards your medical school. Um, my school was interesting in that our grade was based on one test that we took. It wasn't our actual grade in the class. So for a lot of these, I actually got an A in the class in high school, but I got a B on the college credit test, and so it trans translated as a B, which not a huge deal, but it was kind of a bummer. It did definitely 
um, mess with my GPA overall. But yeah, so you'll see some of these from Lynn Benton Community College, which is where I took it through high school. And you'll see here, like, I've got some B's on there and it was all calculus, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so these are all, I took a lot of credits in high school, which is how I was able to graduate early, which was really nice. And there were a lot of things that I had no idea I would get credit for and I did, which was great. Um, so if you're in high school watching this, take college credits if your school offers them. It helped me out like a huge amount. I was pretty much, I think I was like halfway through my sophomore year technically by credit when I started college and it let me graduate early with like no problem. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, so moving on, I did one term at Portland State and ended up getting a B plus there. Still bitter about that one, but that's okay. Um, and then I transferred to Oregon State. So I mentioned this in my medical school application video that you have to enter all of these by hand. Not fun. Um, it's really tedious, takes a long time, and you want to make sure it's really like correct. And just to give you a glimpse, like you had to put the school name, the year, the term you took it within that year, the type of class it is, the course number, the course name, the course type if you took it like pass fail, and then everything else, what, um, how many credits it was worth and what grade you got. So yeah, that was not fun. Um, but yeah, moving on, these are all of my classes. I'm not gonna go through each of them because that would be too much, but those are all my classes. And at this time when I submitted, I was still finishing. Um, so it shows that these are current or future. I actually completed these classes um, but they weren't on there yet. And so I've, I've had to send my transcript since then, but they didn't update the full application. So I guess if you've been waiting for this, here's my GPA. Um, like I said, my high school <laughs> was kind of a bummer. I got a three, four because of those B's overall. Um, and I had to look this up actually. This is like all the science classes, the BCPM, biology, chemistry, physics, math, anything that went into those categories, this is that breakdown. And then this is all others. So I had to look that up to figure it out myself. But as you can see, my overall GPA was a 385. So I was really happy with that. Math and science one was 3.74 and that's what kind of made me mad about the high school ones is because I got those B's in math classes. And so it really dinged this. But if you see, like I got a four point and a 3.9 in science in my freshman and sophomore year. So it really did hurt a little bit. And then in all others, I got a 3.96. And that's my GPA. And then we move on to the MCAT. Um, I got a 507 overall. As you can see, I did really well in psych and cars. And then my science ones just, was a bummer, but that's okay. Um, I got in, so I don't have to retake it, but that's just another way to show you that like you don't have to have a stellar MCAT score to get into medical school. Sure, you might need to have like a huge 520 or above to get into some of the top schools in the country, but there are lots of great schools that will accept you even without one of those scores. So I'm here to tell you that like, yes, the higher the better, but it's not necessary to like ace your MCAT to get into medical school. It's totally possible. I did it and I know people who had lower scores than me that got in so you can do it. You don't have to like kill yourself to get a great MCAT score if you're not trying to go to those top schools. Okay so moving on. Then you get into this section where you talk about your past experiences and volunteer opportunities, work, all of that stuff. And these are all short little blurbs. And this part did take me a significant amount of time um, because you don't want these to just be like quick little things that you write up. You really want to put some thought into what you're saying about your um, experiences and you want it to be well-written and kind of exciting in some ways. I had really good input from friends and other people who have been through the application process that yes, you can just simply write what it is that you did and that's fine, but you can also make kind of small stories about what you did. Make sure you're hitting the points that really showed why you loved that thing that you did 
and why it furthered your career in wanting to be a doctor. Um, because that's what this all is, right? We're, we're trying to show that we do want to be physicians, we deserve to be physicians, and we want to be trained at that school that we're applying to. So you want to use these little blurbs to kind of show who you are and things that you enjoy, why you enjoy them. So with that being said, I'll just quickly talk about what my experiences were. First is just honors and awards. I just said that I was on the Dean's List. This is a really short one. Then moving on, I was a crisis text line volunteer. I still do this. I still pick up some hours every once in a while. Um, and if you want to pause and read these, you totally can, but I'm gonna scroll through them. Um, but it'll show kind of that I did try to at least um, make them a little interesting to read. And then you also have to kind of keep track of when you're doing things for this because I blocked out the contact name and emails and all that, of course, but they could, I don't know if they do, they could call those people to make sure that everything checks out. So you wanna make sure that you're being honest about the times you were there and roughly how many hours you spent. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, like if you're just starting your undergrad or just working on building your resume, keep track of like dates and rough estimates of hours. I am a, a learning assistant for the physics department. And so I talked about that. I think it shows leadership um, and also shows that I want to help others. That's the other thing you want to show what those experiences like show about you. So why did you pick those things and what parts of your character does that highlight? And um, then I was part of this really cool program called That's My Farmer. Um, I talked about that. And then you also get to say three, I think you get 15 total of these experiences and you get to pick three as your most meaningful, which gives you this like extra paragraph to write about it. So you definitely want to make sure you have three of those because that really gives you the opportunity to talk more about what you did. I'm a medical scribe and I really think that's my probably most meaningful overall. Um, and so I definitely talked about that a lot, talked about what I've learned. Um, I was a waitress for a while. I talked about that because I do think that you want to talk about anything you've done in your undergrad. Um, because it just showcases all these different sides of you. It shows that you were busy <laughs> while you were also getting good grades. Um, anything you can think of is worthy of putting in here. Um, don't feel like something's like not medical, so I don't need to put it in there. Put everything in. If, if you're hitting 15, that's awesome. It's more for them to learn about you. I was a children's farm home volunteer. Um, again, this was one of my most meaningful. Um, so I talked about that a lot. And then I played college volleyball, so I put that on here. Um, if you do anything like club sports or anything while you're in your undergrad, talk about it. Like you want to talk about as much as you can in this so they really get a sense for who you are other than just your numbers and your stats. And then, like I said, put whatever you feel like. I put in that I have a strong passion for health and wellness because I think that really has made me who I am and has also pushed me towards medicine. Really don't feel like anything is off limits. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. That is really it. I blocked off my personal statement. It is a little bit personal. Um, I talk about some personal stories in there, so I didn't feel like sharing that. But if anyone's interested in me talking about kind of the general flow of a personal statement, I would be willing to do that. And I'd also be willing to share small pieces of it. I just didn't want to put it on here. Um, and I think that's pretty common for a lot of people, but I would totally be willing to kind of break down how I wrote my personal statement rather than sharing the whole thing. That is my application. This was my AMCAS application. So again, this goes to the MD schools, but I did basically the exact same thing for the DO schools. I think the only thing different on that is you have to put in your um, physician shadowing hours, but for AMCAS, you would want to put that in your experience and even if you worked with multiple, you can either make separate ones or you could make it all in one. I unfortunately had all of my shadowing opportunities canceled um, because of COVID, but I think that I got a lot of that through scribing, so I wasn't too concerned. But yeah, that is my full application. I hope you learned something today. Remember, this is, I don't want you to compare yourself to me or anyone else. You are your own person on your own journey to medical school. And just because I did something does not mean it would excite you or you would want to do that. 
Um, just because I got a certain GPA or an MCAT does not mean you have to get that exact same thing. Like, there are so many different types of people in this world that everyone should be a physician if they want to and if they can put in the work to get there. So I hope you liked today's video. I have had so much fun making these. Um, if you have any recommendations on what you want to see next, just leave me a comment. Please subscribe to my channel because I'm getting really excited to see more people joining this community and like, comment, whatever. I'd love to interact with you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.